Hey, hi everybody. I wanted to give you an update on where I am with the... <laughs> it's, it feels funny to call it a game at this point, but anyway, we'll get there one day, won't we? Uh, so I've been working through the Handmade Hero stuff, and I'm at the part in Casey's Lessons here. I'll just go back to it. Uh, I'm around day 28. Uh, so day 28, 29, 30, I keep going through them again and again, picking up little bits as I as I review them. And uh, so at this point, I'm looking at doing a tile map. Uh, this is what I have right now. Here, I'll just move that there. Uh, where I can generate a tile map based on um, a multi-dimensional array. And I just, down to the M key here, I can just kind of cycle through these maps just like that. And that was just to test changing maps. And of course, the idea is that as the character moves through a door, um, or through stairs or something like that that the map can change so I wanted to test that just with a just with a key So the the map is fairly simple in the beginning here um, It's just some rectangles that he's drawing out that uh, Is mapped from uh, like an array so I'll step you through the stuff that I've got so far just to kind of make this happen uh, the first thing I did was before rendering a player just zoom in here uh, let's see before rendering the player we render the map and so I go through and I'll, I'll step through every little piece as uh, after I cover this here I step through an array of maps and I keep track of what current map we're looking at and we go through the rows so first we go through uh, the rows this way starting at the first one which would be our y coordinate and then go through each one of the x's and this is what a map would look like, something like this, right? An array of arrays. And everywhere I have a one, that would be a wall. And everywhere that I have a zero, that's an empty space where the player can move. Let's see. So uh, I step through at the first row, I start going through each X. And once I grab my X at the first, so the first one would be Y zero, X zero, that's my tile. And if it is one, then I set my color for the rectangle to white. And if it's a zero, I set it to black. And then I use STL render fill rect. And I just create a rectangle right here, um, setting the tile width and the tile height and the X and Y that I just got up above. Now tile width and tile height. At the top, around line 17 or so, I have some constants set, and this is where I'm just keeping track of kind of the tunable settings that I'm playing with. And these are things I can change really quickly to hopefully um, to just kind of uh, set up, you know, maybe different tile width, tile height, uh, set it a different place on the map. So the first one, uh, I've decided to make this a 17 by 9. Again, I'm just following along with Casey's example. 17 across, 9 down. I created three maps to start and the map I just created a new type uh, where I have the tiles Y and tiles X so this is my um, my multi-dimensional array and now here these settings the map X and map Y that's where in my screen I start drawing the map so I just offset it I come in by 15 and down by 15 before I start drawing the map that's just to give me a little bit of a border around it and then the tile width and tile height I set that now I had to play with this a little bit to get it to fit in with the screen that I decided, the screen size that I decided to use, which was 960 by 540, which is a half of 1080. Um, and that's how I decided on those numbers. You can play around with the numbers you want, depending on your screen uh, or your window size and uh, see what looks best to you. So I just iterate through a map. Now the map that I set before I even start my game loop, uh, this is where I've set my maps right there. I set my current map index to zero, which is the first one. And then I have three uh, functions, map one, two, and three. The reasons why the reason why I did this with the functions is because I imagine as the game is progressing, like there's going to be an event that causes the map to change. Again, like the player walking through a door or something like that. And so I wanted, um, I'm just trying to keep the maps separate from the rest of the code so that it's, um, Later on, it'll be easier to decide how I actually change out the maps. So I just preload all the maps in my maps array. And then the only thing I need to change um, is the current map index. 
And so in my loop right here, it's just a different map index depending on the situation, right? And it'll just iterate through the current map that is set. Now the functions are just at the bottom. You can just zoom down there to see them. Pretty easy to set those up. I haven't gotten as far yet as changing rooms when going through doors, etc. So I don't even know if this will work out very well. But I've kind of just tried to follow along with what Casey's doing and not copy it exactly. I just zoom through a few things if I have a few questions, but I'm trying to do it um, on my own at first just to see what works. And that way I can run into different problems. That's just the way I learn best. And then I'll review kind of what he's done and, and decide or realize, oh, that's why I had this problem. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. So that kind of helps me just think it through more and it helps it stick a little bit better too. So going back to where I'm rendering my map after rendering it here, uh, you now understand where, uh, you know, these different variables are coming from map X, tile width, etc. And that's pretty much it. I believe, uh, in my event handlers, let's go back up here. Yes. This is where the change map function happens. Just when you hit an M and let's see if I'm not missing anything else. Okay, that's it. So in the next little bit, what I'm going to be tackling is collision detection, because of course, if you move this around, you see I'm just walking right over the walls. And there were some interesting aha moments while, uh, while I was working through the collision detection, and that I will share in the next video. So if you want to see that, just keep an eye on things. Okay, if, um, if you have any questions or any uh, concerns or suggestions, please put them down in the comments below. And uh, one more thing, when you start a video like this, be sure to look through the Git history on GitHub because I made a few other changes here and there. And, uh, you know, it's just little things that I don't really have to go through in a video. But um, for example, adding in this is vsync enabled flag. So things like that, you can just kind of catch up with where I'm at by looking at the Git history. And if anything um, stands out, if you have a question or whatever about something, you just put it down below this video or something. All right. So yeah, hopefully that helps and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.